Open by saying welcome to the Monday, April the 5th, 2021 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let members and staff introduce themselves. Martha Smirsky, member. Hannah Smith, member. Sanchini, member. Steve Everett, member. And Meredith Crandall, staff. Meredith, would you review the remote meeting procedures and process? Yes, gladly. Give me just a second to share my screen. Okay. So, all right, for those viewing this meeting via Orca Media, um, you can participate in the meeting via the Zoom platform. You can either use this link to be able to access all of the Zoom video features, um, or you can call in at this phone number and plug in this meeting ID to access this particular meeting, and then you'd be able to participate verbally by phone. If you have any problems accessing the meeting, please email me. I've got that open right now, and I'll be able to um, maybe give you a little bit of guidance. Um, if anybody is in the meeting and is having problems, please use the Zoom chat function um, and please reserve that chat for technical difficulties only. The Zoom meeting is being recorded as well as streamed live via Orca Media. Turning on your video is optional. All public testimony will be taken verbally. Um, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This reduces background noise. If you, if someone, I think everybody's on standard. If somebody calls in via the phone, you can use star six to mute your phone. And that also lets everybody know that you are muted. Um, again, all we have on right now are applicants. I think if a member of the public signs on, I'll go through the process then when we, when we bring them in. Um, so in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. Um, and if anybody is having problems viewing the share screen documents, there we go. Um, or if anybody um, who is watching via ORCA wants to pull download the documents you can do them here um, you'll just go to, into the design review committee agenda for tonight and then you can download the packet please note that all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote i'll now hand this meeting back over to the chair Thinking Steve might be trying to get the recommendation for my email to him. Yes, I did. I just oh. ran to the printer and I'm all set. <laughs> so I'm all set. It's back to you, Steve. Okay. Do unless anyone else on the committee has anything else to add at this point, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? Um, this is Martha. I'll move to approve the agenda, but Meredith, I'm not sure if you realize that Seth is still being listed as a member. I'm not sure if that means he's coming back, but he's still listed as a member. Yep. Nope. That's a typo. Okay. Well, with that change, I'll move to accept the agenda. I'll second. This is Hannah. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. Hannah. Steve, you still there, Ben? Oh, 
Okay. I am. I guess yeah, we have yeah. a. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Then, then we can move forward to the first application for Four Main Street, Bailey Sign, Owner Palmerlo Family Partnership. The request to add to wall signage. Is the applicant here? I am here. Go ahead and describe your application for us. Okay. Uh, I'm Douglas Boyce, representing Bailey Sign Company uh, for the uh, Shaw's property for Main Street. Uh, Shaw's has been a uh, large and valued client of Bailey Sign for many years. We're located in Westbrook, Maine, but we do a lot of Shaw's signage throughout their operating territory. And Shaw's is uh, joining the ranks of the retailers uh, who want to provide more convenience for their customers by virtue of uh, internet or online ordering and customer pickup at stores. So they're doing this to announce this program to the customers and to, to roll it out. Basically, they're, they're going to be adding signage to uh, all of their locations where they're offering this service, which I think are all of their stores. Um, so they're going to be putting uh, a wall sign on the building itself, and then they'll be placing uh, post-mounted signs in the parking lot uh, because they'll have parking spaces dedicated exclusively for this use. I uh, will mention that uh, Shaw's is actually part of a much larger grocery uh, organization of over 2,000 stores uh, across the country under operating under many different banners. And they have, uh, they have come up with the uh, design uh, for the signage, colors, the logo, uh, how that wants to read. And uh, I guess in, in the coming years, if you were to travel across the country and encounter uh, some of the sister banners of, of Shaw's under, under the same umbrella, you might see the same signage uh, at those locations. So they've developed a signage program that they'd like to roll out uh, every place they operate, um, notwithstanding the fact that some ordinances uh, don't allow the uh, precise amount of signage that uh, that others might. So we've provided uh, uh, some drawings uh, or exhibits that indicate the uh, location, size, placement, and design of the sign to be uh, installed on the storefront of the building. Uh, uh, it's in a photographic uh, representation, and then there's also a an actual detailed uh, design sheet for that storefront wall sign. That will be non-illuminated. Uh, the existing Shaw's sign is, is externally illuminated. Uh, this new sign will be non-illuminated on the building. Uh, and there are six parking spaces that they're going to dedicate uh, to this drive up and go service. And I provided you an aerial view uh, of the property and indicated on that aerial view the location of those uh, six parking stalls off to the right by the uh, abutting the, the current or former railroad right of uh, the right hand side of the store. So there'd be a post mounted sign uh, at each of those six parking stalls and the details of that sign, its construction are shown in a separate, uh, a separate sheet. And that's basically what the proposal consists of. Please let me know if anyone wants I'm me sorry, to Please let me know if anyone wants me to share my screen. This is Meredith. I just had a quick question. Is the color of the sign on the logo with the car in the background, is that the same color red as the shot? Uh, unfortunately, I can't confirm or deny that. I'm not uh, intimate with the color of the Shaw's. At this point, I know they have they have uh, changed some of their stores in recent years. Um, if they're signed, I guess the best best I can offer is if the current sign appears as red, it's probably going to be a real close real close match. Uh, some of the older some of the older model Shaw's were uh, a more orangey uh, color, uh, but this is this is definitely more of a red uh, tone from the new sign. Okay, that was my only question. If it was matching as part of your, as part of your Shaw's brand. 
Yeah, I don't think the intention, uh, I should say it would be great if it does match, but given that this program is being rolled out to other uh, system banners that probably presumably have uh, a variety of other uh, logos, colors, so forth as their standard, um, I think it's really what they want to do is keep this keep this uh, particular logo for drive up and go as as their identifier for that service. Okay. Incidentally, Bailey Bailey signs role in in this project is is the wall sign itself. Uh, any the other uh, site signage, the post mounted signs, and so forth. Uh, Shaw's will will have those done under a corporate contract with. That's going to be doing a lot of uh, a lot of different locations for them. Okay. Does anyone on the committee have any questions or suggestions? No. No. Okay. Then we can go through the criteria for all projects exterior design and materials of new construction or, or alterations of existing buildings shall be or other properties in the district. Additions to existing buildings shall respect and be compatible with the size, scale, materials, detailing, and overall character of the primary building. Additions shall not obscure or undermine its essential form and character of the original building. That's acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of its time, place, and use. Changes that create a false sense of historical development, adding conjectural features or architectural elements from other buildings shall not be undertaken. New construction additions, alterations shall be of their own time. That's acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, other forms of molding or character on the existing building shall be considered and the alteration acceptable with the addition of the sign on the facade. And then there's some criteria specific to the sign. The size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior design, all exterior signs within the design review overlay district shall be compatible with the building and structures at the site and surrounding properties acceptable. Where appropriate signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures. This location is acceptable next to the Shaw's sign. Sign design color and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, speak your names. Martha, yes. Hannah, yes. Ben, yes. Steve, yes. So the application is approved. Thank you all very much. Mer Meredith, do you want to explain the, the next step? Yeah. Um, so Doug, because there weren't any recommendations or changes on this, once we get the signed um, recommendation form back from Steve, we'll be able to issue the permit and that'll get mailed out. Let me think, hold on one second. I'm gonna take a peek back to the application form. Right now it's set to be mailed to, um, that would be you, Bailey Sign. Very good. Thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you and good luck with your project. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Mm, goodbye. The next application is for 3 Main Street. Applicant Andrew Ward Landshapes. And we have two applications here. And I believe the first one. I think the first one is for installation of patio dining area. Yep. 
That's the one for a permanent installation, so I think that makes sense to do that one first. Okay. Is our applicant here to go over the application? I don't know if Andrew's there. Uh, this is Carol. I'm here. Uh, he was going to oh, come. Okay. Hi, Carol. Hi, Steve. Um, anyway, I can I can help you. Okay, go ahead. Um, so we are wanting to install a stone patio that will be um, on the other where the grass was. We had some tables last summer with umbrellas, and uh, we want to improve the ground for the servers and for the customers and. Uh, the tables. So we went to Landshapes and um, they came up with a design that we could do. We had to be tested to see what our impervious number was, um, which I don't know that much about, but I know that we uh, got 100 and, and that's the best. So I know that's good. And um, they can start the work pretty much as soon as, you know, this would be approved. Um, and it would be something we would use every summer. Uh, I, I want to have like that little section of four tables, even after COVID. I just think it was nice. And um, do you have other questions that I didn't hit? Uh, Carol, this is Martha. Hi. Um, hi. You said that the imperviousness test was 100. Yes. That was my only concern was in terms of runoff Yes, know, rain runoff and where it was going to go and whether it was going to go directly into the river. Yes, but so we, we did that right away. They he the landscaper actually knew that he's like I've got to go and you know figure out what this number is because that will determine you know yeah. one factor if we can do this or not. So it did it did turn out well. Okay, good. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Meredith. Is it possible for you to share your screen with this one so we can sort of see the site plan? Yes. Uh, all right, let me zoom in. So can you see that? Just, just fine. So there'll be, there'll be cutouts where the pavers aren't at all for planting area for the trees. Um, and then this a, area will be the pervious, what, what I would call pervious pavers that allow water to infiltrate. Ah. There's also so a have, good shot, the page before that, that shows the planting bed. Right, so he's gonna leave. Which, he which said will pick up a lot of the water. Great, do we have, um... What is the material that is going to be the paver? That is right here. Let me zoom in. Permalock. block. Yep. So that gives more of the detail on what goes into all the different parts, how it goes, how it, what it's filled with underneath, under the actual block. And the block is concrete type material? I would, you know, I, I had a sample in my hand, so I would call it, you know, like those pavers that around a swimming pool or uh, that's where I'm thinking about it. Um, so it's sort of uh, brickish, but not not that uh, not that deep. Um, do you know what I mean? Am I sending you the right direction? <laughs> not brickish in color, but brickish in texture. Yes, and ours is actually going to be a little brickish in color. It's sort of brick and gray, uh, kind of muted together. Um, so it's sort of it's not going to like be, you know, bright orange sticking out. It's sort of going to blend and, uh, you know, really what I was looking for was a level uh, ground. Sounds wonderful. I think it'll be really nice. Oh, thanks. I, I think it's going to look great too. 
it's interesting because they call it a permeable paver. Ah, I didn't even I didn't even notice that. <laughs> and that's you can see that up on the. Uh, oh, I see it. Yeah. Yep. It's the page above that. It shows that it's a permeable paver from Techo. Yeah, I see that now. And again, they they layer it so that it will absorb. It will absorb water and runoff. Yes, that's right. And so you intend to do a fair amount of sub paver work. You're going to pull out a bunch of soil and then yeah. put in some more drainage stuff that you can pack flat and level out nicely so that when you put the pavers on, they all align beautifully. That is right. He's, he needs to dig down. Um, I think it was 10 to 12 inches they'll dig down and um, and then they'll fill it. I'm not sure exactly what they put in there, but it's, you know, it's, it's whatever's the, whatever one would be looking for. And, um, and then everything can be totally level. And then probably every year he might have to come and do a little maintenance because in the winter they might, you know, do a little bit of a um, bump up a little bit, but they said they can easily put them back into place. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. And I noticed on one of the diagrams here that you intend to do planting beds on either end of this area yes. too? Yes. So he said, I'm sort of, I'm funny about my plants. Like, I really, um, I've had them for a long time and they like matter to me. So he's going to try not to disrupt them too much. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever he disrupts, he's going to come back and plant. And then I think he'll plant uh, in front of Shaw's like that line he'll, he'll do. He can't do the other line because that's where the servers will come in uh, from the building. But okay. he'll do the, uh, the street, which will be nice, you know, just even for dust, you know, it'll be nice to have them there. Okay. Does anyone else on the committee have any other questions? Uh, I want to look at that site plan one more time and just curious about um, opportunities for people enjoying the river or viewing the river a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, there's kind of like a, I don't actually know in my mind what's there, like that prevents people, that allows you to get as close as you can to the river without falling off the bank. It is, uh, right now there are like one, two, three, four, five or six big uh, granite blocks. So those will remain and uh, there'll be nothing else in the way. So it'll be very much the same as what it is right now as far as viewing the river, that, that really won't change. I'm sorry, I just wanna make sure, is anybody seeing the, the packet? I tried to share screen, but I can't tell if it's working. I can see your screen. I can see it on my screen. Okay, great. It doesn't. It just doesn't have the usual little green thing around it. So I was a little confused. No, it's there. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. The the plantings and block are are at the height that it's easily that the river is easily viewable whether you're sitting or standing along the entire patio area that's right steve it is i meant to put in some pictures i don't remember if i did or not of last year people sitting there but i think i forgot oh yeah that that's it right there so it'll be the same as far as what the tables are it's just going to look a lot better than that dirt <laughs> Anybody else have any other questions from the committee? If not, I can go through the criteria. Sheet number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations. Consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other property in the district. 
additions to existing buildings shall respect and be compatible with the site scale materials detailing and overall character of our under 90 percent recognized as a physical record of time and place and use changes that create a false sense of historical development such as adding conjectural features or architectural elements from other buildings should not be undertaken. New construction additions and alterations shall be of their own time and shall not create a false sense of histor historicity acceptable. Proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and the site on which the project is located acceptable. And then outdoor, is there any outdoor lighting on the patio? Uh, the only lighting is this year, I uh, I ordered new umbrellas uh, for the tables and the umbrellas have these little LED lights around the top of the inside of the umbrella so that at night you have a little more light. Um, <coughs> it was a little dark at, at night, but that's all there is. There's There's nothing else. Okay. That's certainly acceptable within the, it's under the umbrella. Yeah, it's, it's right in the umbrella. Yes, no, those work really well. And also then the design okay. review district and subject to the landscaping requirements shall be consider, shall consider the following site furnishings, including fencing, seating, other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yard shall be considered within the context of the existing building and size, its site and its context. Landscaping should not be placed or designed in a matter that would obscure or undermine key architectural patterns be preserved or replicated when employed in either residential or commercial institutional settings. Mechanical equipment such as HVAC that does apply here. Green fencing such as hedges planted with native or hardy landscape species so can be employed as effective buffers and screens or utilities and other elements incompatible with an historic district. That's not applying here. So all of the features that apply are acceptable. All in favor of the application for the patio pavers, speak your names. Ben. Anna. Steve. And Martha, were you there? You're muted, Martha. Okay, here I am. Yes, I'm a yes. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we got your vote one way or the other. Thank yeah. you. Well, I was, yeah, I had a little technological problem here for a minute. Oh, that's okay. Okay, that one's approved. And we can go for the next application for Sarducci's for the tent. Thank you, Steve. You want to just describe the tent? Is this the same tent that you had last year? Yes, it's the exact uh, same tent. Um, it will be in the exact same place. So it fit, well, I keep using the same word exact, but it fit exactly in the first seven spaces of um, of our parking lot. And so it's gonna be, yeah, exactly the same. Okay, does and anyone on the committee have any questions about the tent as was erected last year? Carol, when do, when do you expect to put it up? Well, the plan is uh, that if we got approved for the patio, which we just did, so thank you so much, they're going to go first because they're going to have to bring in a little bit of equipment and they would be in the, they'll need that access of where the tent would be. So they're going to go first. He said it would probably take two days. To them, this is a very simple job. And then I'll have the tent. I talked to Mike Lupus at Vermont Tent Company and, um, He's ready for me on April 15th, but that all depends if the patio is done. If not, it'll be at the end of April, 1st of May, so in there.
Okay, if no one has any questions, we'll run through the same criteria for the 10. Okay. Number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations are consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building. And they respect size, scale, materials, detailing, and overall character of the primary building. Additions shall not obscure or undermine the essential form and character of the original building. All of those are acceptable. Again, the tent is the temporary structure for the season. Number two, existing building shall be recognized as a physical record of time, place, and use. Uh, the changes do not create any sense of this development and new construction additions and all duration shall be their own time and shall not create a false sense of historicity. That's acceptable. Proposed landscaping. Uh, I'm not sure you would call the tent landscaping, but its effect on that area is certainly simple. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, fencing, shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. Steve, did I lose you? Oh, we just lost Steve. Maybe, maybe not. Steve, you're now muted. Hmm. Oh, Back. now if there you are. Okay. So there's no fencing that comes with the tent. Mechanical equipment. Don't be screen from public view and again no nothing intensive of mechanical equipment within the tent and green fencing such as hedges planted with native hardy landscape again that's not applicable with the tent so the tent is acceptable can you hear i just stopped your video steve because you're you're breaking up are you still there I'm still here. I'm trying to hang on. Sorry. Give me a minute. Okay. I, I turned your video off because the sound was breaking up. Hold on a minute. I'll be back. Okay. Can you hear me now? Ah, uh, it was better a minute ago. <laughs> Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. We've gone through the criteria sheet. Do I? Everyone on the committee in favor of the application, speak your name. This is Martha. I'm a yes. Anna says yes. And says yes. And Steve says yes. So it's approved. Yay. Thank you all. 
You're quite welcome. Sorry for the technical difficulties. It's fine. I always have technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your patience. No problem. Thank you all very much. And good luck. And good luck with your projects. We're looking forward to it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye, Carol. Bye-bye. Nice to see you all. For the next step for you, Carol. Meredith, can you hear me? I can. You're sort of in and out. I'm wondering if you want to sign off and just call in if you're not using the video anyway. Can you? I can call in. That might be the way to go because you keep breaking up. Okay, sorry. Thank you, Dan and Alicia, for your patience. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me now? Wow. For some reason, I got a lot of static. Yeah, uh, I hear you. It is very static, you know. I'm not sure that's much better. Let me, let me try a different line. <laughs> okay. Hang on. Okay. Sorry. Hello. Hello. So much better. Okay, good. Okay. That's that's sad. I had to go from a landline to my cell phone. Okay, we have some weird echo going on now. Maybe disconnect your whatever you're that, doing. That I have to unmute. I'll try to stand back so it doesn't get feedback. Okay, the next application is for 10 Elm Street, the Washington County Courthouse, Claire Construction, replacement of an access ramp.
Is someone there to explain the application? Hi, hi Steve, this is Dan Clare. Are you looking for Meredith to explain the application? Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, Dan. No, that's okay. Ooh, sorry, uh, Meredith, if you, were, if you were just speaking to me, I couldn't understand that. Did you, could you say that again? Yeah, I think we've all got echoes. Um, I was just gonna say that usually for DRC, oh, wow. Hey, I just muted Steve so that we can talk without echo for everybody else. Dan, usually for DRC, which is different from DRB, the applicants just go right ahead. I don't usually introduce the applications, so you go ahead. Okay, very good. So we are proposing a new um, wheelchair ramp to replace the existing wheelchair ramp. Um, the existing wheelchair ramp is um, it, at the end of its lifespan um, and needing to be replaced. Um, when we started looking at that, we also determined that uh, the uh, the slope of the of the existing ramp is not quite what we need it to be, hence the extended length, hence the added length of, uh, of the proposed design so that we can, um, you know, meet the required, uh, so that we can meet the slope requirements. Um, the walking surface is a concrete surface. It's going to be, uh, we're asking that the, uh, the face of it be uh, faced with some granite uh, block um, that is kind of cut of the same um, kind of uh, uh, texture as the existing foundation stone on that building. Um, so we've got the concrete walking surface. We've got the granite kind of uh, kind of veneer um, kind of over the on the sides of the of the ramp. Um, and we've got the galvanized steel railing, and I, I see, in, I, I noticed in the plans that some, that it, some, it holds over as galvanized, comma painted. It is not painted. It is just galvanized for the, uh, you know, galvanized steel for the for the railing. Uh, the existing little roof that covers the door, uh, that protects the door, will remain there. We'll temporarily kind of prop it up um, and then uh, build some new posts just, you know, to, to basically replicate what is there, just setting down on the new concrete. Um, and that's the gist of it. What, what questions do you have for me? Dan, this is actually the building behind the courthouse, right? The building that has the sheriff's office in it? That's correct, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Meredith, again, can you share your screen and just show the, the site plan? So let's here's close up site plan. I can do. Um, one of the ones further out if you want me to, but I'll need to rotate the document. That's fine. Can you scroll to an elevation? So the current ramp that's there now doesn't have any kind of foundation, but this one will have that granite wall. Yeah, the current ramp that's present, the current ramp is up on concrete, concrete sauna tubes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those will be removed uh, during the course of this project. And Dan, it's the expectation, which I, I believe to be true, but the galvanized will, uh, when somebody's throwing a whole lot of salt sand on this ramp, will keep those steel railings from corroding. That is certainly the intention. 
yeah, we know that that yeah, that's that's part of the reason why we chose the galvanized instead of a painted steel. Mm -hmm. Good. It's a nice design. I like the curve. I like the block. I feel like it makes it a far more interesting ramp on that building than the than the previous one. Yeah, no doubt. I actually um, have a sample of the of the granite, and it's a nice match to the texture of the existing building. Are there ideas floating around? What goes in the new chipped granite rock garden? Yeah, that, that's a, that would be an overstatement. That was that was a wonderful idea. That you know, but it, it will be. There will not there will not be any sculpture or artwork in there unless Ben, you've got something in mind there. I but um, but no, it will just be a crushed stone uh, kind of surface there. That was that was an idea that was floated, but uh, but isn't going to gain traction at least in this moment. No, but there's no reason that couldn't be added at a later date. You're going to fill that in with, with the granite, the broken up granite as you're proposed here, though, right? That's correct. Yeah. Because I think it would be a really kind of interesting place for some art to show up someday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of tails off on the drawing here at the level landing at the bottom, and it says the four inch granite curb. Okay, there it is. That's how that returns to the building. And that will also be the, uh, the kind of chipped granite will flow into that kind of weird trapezoid in there. Oh, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yep. And how tall is that curb where it says four, inch, four inches probably? Yeah, or is it four inches wide? No, it's four. Yeah, good question. No, it's four inches tall. I don't know what the standard width on curbing is, but it's the same. It's curbing. It's the same granite curb that you see all over Montpelier. Yep. Nice. And then roughly how tight is it between that kind of outside corner and the rail? Like, can a person walk through that? Yeah, right in there relatively easily. Um, you're talking about it that at that smallest kind of pinch point right there. Yeah, just like I imagine stuff getting in there and oh, people sure. not having to have to jump over the rail, but being able to walk back in there to yeah, get something. I don't really have the ability to like scale this right this second, so sure. Your guess is probably as good as mine, but I'm I'm gonna guess it's something to the something to the tune of you know 10 12 inches right there yeah that's what it feels like a committed individual could get there <laughs> true enough all right and, you know, the, the railing detail then is also such that um you know the the elevation doesn't really necessarily you know lend one to think this but if you look at the section on a2 you'll see that like you know the the uh the the granite comes up four inches or, or whatever it is, some, some number of inches above the concrete ramp. And then there's 30 something, I don't have my glasses on me, but 30 something, you know, inches in between the top of the granite and the underside of the rail. So, you know, there's another opportunity to kind of um, get in that zone as well. It's not all closed off. You could easily get in underneath there. Yeah, great. Sure, yeah. Very nice. Thanks. One other question is, are those, is the railing square or round? I remember looking at this and thinking it was square, but it, is it still square? Oh uh, boy, it's, um, it is still square. Let me zoom in on that. So the existing looks like it's a mix of square and rounded. 
the existing? Yeah, it looks like the one the ones adjacent to the door look like they're rounded or squared, whereas the ones on the ramp itself look like they're rounded. I can yeah. reach those right. are two different two different uh kind of um um you know yeah. done at two different times. Sorry, Ben, I'm trying to zoom in on my on my sheet here, but I one second. No problem. Um, I don't have square is what I'm saying. Hold yeah, on. the handrail, I saw that is square, and I assume that that is in the post. Square to oh, here we go. Here we go. Sorry, I was just looking at the wrong drawing. Yes, yes, yes. If we look at the section across the ramp drawing number three on A2, yeah, we see that the uh, grab rail is inch and a half steel square, and um, actually, it's all the posts. It's all um, that post and the grab rail are inch and a half uh, galvanized steel square tubing. And it will be the handrail will be and railing will all be bent in a sort of graceful way like the ramp is and not be segmented, correct? That is correct, yes. That's where we ran into problems. Uh -huh. Looks good. Thank you. Nice. Good. Thank you. Meredith, can you hear me now? Uh, yep. <laughs> yes, I can. If you can hear me, I'll try. If you can hear me, I'll try to read through the criteria for the project. One, yep. exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings. But the characteristics of the existing building acceptable existing building should be recognized as a physical changes alteration shall be of their own time not create a false sense of historicity the railings are acceptable in both of those Additions to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Where applicable, development shall be designed to respect views of the State House Dome. That's certainly acceptable. And then there were a couple of items as far as additions and alterations to historic buildings, generally applicable historic character of a property shall be retained and preserved. The character and finding features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Development shall not destroy character defining features any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, none apply here. Any new development shall be differential from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size scale architectural features, detailing an overall character of the primary historic building. The, those are acceptable. Site features, existing historic and contributing resources such as Street trees, fences, gates, walls, steps, gazebos, walkways, front and side yard patterns shall be retained or restored when, when impacted. There's nothing that impacts the existing, so that's acceptable. Materials, character defining material, materials, 
materials should be preserved to the maximum extent practicable. Materials shall match existing materials to the maximum extent feasible. All those details are acceptable with the proposed ramp. Architectural features, architectural or character defining features prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration when an architectural feature on an historic building has been deteriorated. That's not applicable here. Architectural features on an addition shall not duplicate, but just ramps and stairs shall be placed in a manner that does not impact or undermine the original and significant ornamentation or detailing of the existing building. Stairs, ramps, and porches shall employ suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the historic and important design features of existing buildings and new construction. Stairs and ramps should be designed in a manner with detail accept acceptable. All in favor of the ramp as proposed, speak your names. This is Martha. I say yes. Anna says yes. Sam says yes. yes. Okay. Application is approved. In spite of all the technical difficulties. <laughs> thank you for thank for you very much, you. Dan. All right. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. You too, Dan. Okay. Thanks. That's interruptions. No problem. Thank you. The next application is for 7th School Street, Malone Properties. And this is regarding the replacement of an existing overhead door on the eastern side of the building with a storefront style window. Is something for the application? Yes, Alicia Filer with Malone Properties. And let me um, share my screen so I can show you the picture. Um, so the, the building that we're looking to renovate um, is 7 School Street, and it is a historic building. Um, this is the eastern side of the building. The front of the building is more recognizable as this front. <clears throat> so this is the eastern side of the building, and we're looking to replace the overhead door here in this red box, and I zoomed in a bit this overhead door with a window instead to let light in. Um, the new tenant will have some office spaces or office units in there um, that sunlight is more valuable than an, a loading, loading dock door. Um, so the idea is that it would be replaced with a um, four pane kind of storefront style. It will replace the full opening of the door. So the, um, the full width of 59 inches wide by the um, eight feet tall would be that one unit of, of four panes and it would be painted, they call it Hartford green. So in attempt to match the other green windows that are already um, in that, on that building. What are the other windows like there, Alicia? The other windows are um, yeah on they, that side. They definitely yep. They definitely vary some. So this is an example right here. Here's the the door that we're looking to replace with a window. Right. Um, and this this is a typical of that window. I think there's one, two, three, three or four sets along that. For like yeah, I'll show you right now. One, two, three, four that have the um. How do they call that? What do they call that? Twelve over twelve, or it looks like a nine over nine. Just... I think it's twelve. It's okay. It's deceiving. There's there's several, and and the historic um registry document actually says that it's six over six, which I think we can agree is not the case. But right. um, so these ones are all those 
but we weren't, we're planning on matching the opening. So none of the brickwork would change. We can keep that, um, the integrity of all of that style still the same. How do you intend to fill in below the window? The window will actually go to the full length of where the door is right now. So it will be like a, what they call a storefront type window. It'll go from the top of a normal door opening eight feet all the way to the ground. Or in this case, um, the elevated spot where the granite stops and the door starts, that, that line right here will be the, the bottom of the window. I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, now that I'm looking yeah. at it. Uh, I can, yes. Yeah. And that, okay, and, and that loading dock will just be art. So the, the platform um, is actually protecting some of the utilities that are back here. There's an electric meter and there's a gas meter and things like that. So right now we're, we're planning on keeping it there to protect. Um, you can see there's not actually supposed to be parking in this area, but clearly there's a, there's a vehicle there. Um, so we're, we're looking just to kind of keep that corner protected. And if in the future we need to remove that, um, loading dock will have to come to Meredith for site plan review, <laughs> um, to, to look at that, that change. But for right now that, um, is, is planning on staying and it'll just be the window fitting in that door opening. I guess my only question is, was, did you look at doing windows that more, more closely resemble the ones that are there? like a 12 over 12. Um, was that not, uh, well, I, I think that the concern was, is being able to appropriately match the brick and the, um, if we did a, a similar style 12 over 12 window here, um, we'd really want to match that brickwork and, um, granite block. And I, I think it just wasn't, um, it wasn't an ideal situation and more sunlight is well in my world more sunlight is better but um the, to have that storefront style will allow a lot more light in in that space and and not um try to patch in uh, non-historic brick and, and there's a pretty unique uh cement block type style face there so it's we don't want to I agree with the, you that missed the mark on that. That going to a twelve over twelve when you have a different opening size, therefore having all your uh, squares or rectangles being slightly different than all the ones next to it, I would rather see you do what you're proposing, which is change it radically than try to be close and miss a little bit. Right. I don't Can hear you hear me, Meredith? Oh, there we go. Okay, sorry. I thought I lost her. Uh, Alicia, could you unshare so we can just see each other? Awesome. Steve, I don't know if, are you there? Can you hear me, Meredith? This is Steve. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. Unless anybody else has anything to add or any other questions, I can go through the criteria for the proposed change. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations 
shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building. And again, the compatibility of size, scale, materials, detailing, and overall character with the primary building. And the additions or changes do not obscure or undermine the essential form and character of the original building. Existing buildings should be recognized as a physical record of time, place, and use, and any changes are compatible with that. are acceptable. There's a comment about rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings in the facade of a building shall create a rhythm, proportional architectural details, sense of rhythm and regular spacing of fenestration shall be considered, scale and massing of architectural features shall present a variety in their composition. That's acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tabulator trim, and other forms of molding or character, defining detailing, shall be considered in the alteration. That's acceptable. And then there's a section on additions and alterations to historic buildings. Historic character of a property shall be retained and preserved. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. The addition does not obscure or undermine essential form and character. Additions shall not introduce style and features that are not compatible. Uh, no damage is being caused by this change to any part of the building. And it says any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size scale features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building. That's acceptable. Rhythm, again, this is a repeat. Patterns of solids and openings shall be preserved to the extent feasible. That's acceptable. Materials, the materials are compatible with the existing materials of the other windows. Architectural features, architectural or character defining features prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in any alteration. There's no deterioration. The replacement again is considerate of the details of the, of, of the building of the other windows. The architectural features on an addition, in this particular case, they do not duplicate, but respect the original building's architectural features, acceptable. Windows and doors, character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features uh, shall be preserved to the extent possible. Um, windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be, must be compatible with the historic building style materials and architectural features acceptable. All in favor of the application to replace the door with the proposed window, speak your names. This is Martha, I'm a yes. Hannah says yes. And says yes. And Steve says yes, it is approved. Thank you. Meredith, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Um, so Alicia, just like the others, we just need to get the recommendation form back from Steve and we'll be issuing the permit for this. Thank you, have a good night everyone. You too. Thank you very much.
Hello, Ben. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, this is Martha. I'll move to approve the minutes. I'll second. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. Anna. Ben. And Steve. And our next meeting is April the 19th. Does anyone have anything else to add at this point? Steve, this is Hannah. Um, I just wanted to quickly say that this is actually my last meeting. I moved out of Montpelier um, a few months ago. And as I am no longer a resident, I'm not um, uh, putting an application in for another term. So I wanted to thank you um, I, as a person without any background in historic preservation. This has been a really great learning experience for me and I've really enjoyed serving on the committee. Thank you very, very much for your participation. It's greatly appreciated and we will miss you. Yeah, well, I'm not that far away from Montpelier, so I, I will probably see you guys around town. Well, I'm very sorry, I missed everything you just said. Oh, um, this this is my, my last meeting. My term is ending and I no longer live in Montpelier. It's been great working with you, Hannah. And, yes, uh, thanks, Martha. You will be you will be greatly missed. Well, I will, um, Meredith. I will send out word of the open position and see if I can find anyone who's interested. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we're advertising on this end because we'll have we actually have two openings. Your seat is going to be opening up, and we have an alternate position open. So. Um, All right. If anybody's interested, please reach out to me here at City's Hall. Thank you very much. Again, it's greatly appreciated. Yeah, and thanks, again, Steve. And we, we will miss you. Thanks. Hi, Hannah. It was great to have you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Hannah. Good luck. Thanks. Good luck to the committee. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sign off. If, if anyone, if, does anyone have anything else? Otherwise, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Ooh, I'll move to adjourn. <laughs> it's my final action. <laughs> I will second. All in favor of Adjournment, speak your names. Martha, yes. Hannah. Ben. And Steve. Meeting is adjourned. Yay. Thank Have you. Have a nice evening. Bye. Thank Bye. you all. Bye now. Thanks all.